Hey guys, Tim here from TimKipTutorials.com and welcome to another Android development tutorial. Today we're going to talk about Android views and layouts that we're going to be using in our XML files. So what I've done is I've created a new project called Android Layouts and we're going to create a new layout file under our layouts directory. So go to new layout resource file and I'm using Android Studio so your option may be different if you're using Eclipse. So for the file name, I'm just going to name it linear underscore layout. Root element of linear layout is OK, so just OK. And as you can see, it brings up a design view with you have a bunch of uh, uh, views over here that you can drag and drop onto the screen. And it's some of your properties, um, properties panel in your component tree on the right side here. But I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from design view to text view on the bottom here. Now as you can see a little preview of your device comes up on the side over here. I'm just going to zoom out so we can see what we're doing. And you can see in the code here we have a standard XML document type and then we have a linear layout with some attributes in it. I'm just going to align these up so we can read them a little better. So we have a linear layout here with an orientation, a layout width, and a layout height. Anytime you have a linear layout or a relative layout, um, you're always going to have some sort of width or height on any view that you're going to put on screen. For linear layout, you're also going to need an orientation. What orientation for linear layouts does is it tells Android where it's supposed to align its views that are inside. So if I were to put a simple button here, we can do a button just like that. We need to give it a layout width and a layout height. Always remember that. So Android colon layout underscore width. And for the width property and the height property, there's three different things you can pick from. We can do wrap content. We can do fill parent. And we can also do match parent. I'm just going to choose wrap content for now. And I'm going to do the same thing for the height. So Android layout underscore height equals wrap content. And then we're going to give it a text for inside of our button. So Android colon text equals, and then we can name it whatever we want. We'll just say button one. And to close our button off, you can either do a greater than sign and it will autocomplete to a close off your button tag. Or what I like to do is I'm just going to close it off with a forward slash and then the greater than sign. Now as you can see over here in a little preview window, we have button 1. Let's go ahead and, and add a, the same button again, so we'll just copy this and we'll paste it right underneath. And we'll change the text to button 2. Now as you can see in our preview window, the button appears below button 1. So we have button 1 on top, button 2 on the bottom. That's where the orientation comes into play. So if I were to change this from vertical to horizontal, you'll notice that the button goes from left to right now. Sort of like a horizontal uh, alignment, if you want to call it that. So horizontal, all your views inside of your layout are going to be horizontally aligned. And if you have vertical, they're going to be vertically aligned. So I'm just going to change it back to vertical for now. So now we have two buttons inside of our linear layout. What happens if we want to change the background color of our linear layout? It's as simple as adding a background attribute. So what you can do for inside of your linear layout tag, just go ahead and go down another line and say Android colon background, and then say equals. And inside of your quotations here, you'll type the number symbol, and then you give it a six digit hexadecimal HTML code your color code. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give it a blue color of 006699. And as you can see, the button or the background color changes to a blue color. Now, what if you wanted it to be a darker gray? You could just change the number to, say, 343434. Three, four, three, four. And now it's gray. But for now, I'm just going to leave it without a background but that's how you can do it. Okay. Another thing we can do is we can set up margins or padding. So let's say 
we want this button to be a little bit to the left. What we can do is we can say Android, we can say layout margin, oops, underscore margin, and as you can see it filters out some code hints down at the bottom. If we just want it margin from the left, we can say margin left equals, and then we give it some sort of number value. So let's say 15 dp. And as you can notice, our button moved over. It looks pretty ugly, but we're just getting the basic concepts down of giving views different attributes. So what about a text view? We have two buttons. How about a text view? Let's go ahead underneath the second button. We'll add a text view. Open up our element here and type text view. Make sure your V is uppercase. And remember, we always have to give it a layout height and width. And for this layout width, we're just going to say fill parent. And then for the height, we're just going to say wrap content. Because we don't really need that going anywhere. Okay, and we're also going to give it some text. So for our text view, our text will equal linear layout tutorial. We're going to close off our text view. I spelled linear wrong. Okay, there we go. I'm going to zoom out here. Okay. So you'll notice when I click on the button code over here, well, it highlights just a blue box around the button. Same thing with button two. But our text view it goes all the way across the screen. Now you're probably wondering why it's doing that, but if you notice here, these have wrap content for the width, and this one has fill parent. So what that's doing is it's just making this text view fill up the whole parent. So in this case, the parent is the linear layout. Now what happens if you want to center the text within this text view? You can add another attribute called gravity. and then you can just say center. And what that'll do is center your text within your text view. Now say we want to put one of these buttons in the middle of the view here, or inside of the layout. Same thing we can do, but instead of gravity, we'll use layout gravity of center. So the difference between layout gravity and gravity is gr just normal gravity affects what's inside of the text view or view that you're currently working with. Layout gravity will center it according to its parent um, container. So in this case it's centering it inside of your linear layout. Layout gravity however does not work when your width is fill parent. That is because it's already as wide as it can go and it can't center it anymore. So we're just going to change it back. To wrap content. So what happens if we want to change this text view, or yes, change the text view color? It's as simple as adding a text color attribute. So Android colon text view, or I'm sorry, not text view, text color equals, and then the same format as when we gave the background to the linear layout. We'll just make this a yellow, so four F's and two zeros. And there you go, you have yellow text on your screen. So I'm going to remove the gravity on the button here and the margin from the other button. Just because it doesn't look too good and I'm not really proud of it. I'm going to also going to move the text view above the buttons. And as you can see, things are moved around. So what happens if we want to make the text bigger? We can give it another attribute called Android text size. And then this we're going to, we'll just say 32 SP. And that's pretty big. So you notice how I'm using SP here, but when I was using um, anything regarding width, I'm going to be using DP. Actually, I haven't used DP yet, so let me go through that right now. So, instead of the three um, default width attributes like fill parent, wrap content, and match parent, you can also just specify a width with a given number. 
So let's say button two, we're going to set the width. We want to set it to 100 dp. You notice it got a little bigger. Let's make it 300. So you notice that button's not fulfilling the parent, but it's also not just wrapping the content. So you can specify an exact number that you want. But notice how we're using dp here and sp. Whenever you're talking about text size, you want to use sp. And whenever you're talking about any sort of layout width or view width, you want to use dp, not pixels. And so you can do the same thing with the height. Say you want to give it a 100 dp height. There you go, now you have a giant button. Pretty ugly, but nonetheless it's a button. So those are just some basic attributes for layouts and views that you can mess around with. Hope it gives you a little bit of a starting point to start designing a layout. In the next tutorial we're going to be giving these two buttons an ID and we're going to show you in code how to fire off some sort of event when you click on them through code. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next video.